Welcome back to CBS This Morning. In our Road to a Vaccine series, we look at a crucial issue for the first coronavirus vaccines. This morning, Pfizer said it is applying and will apply today for FDA authorization and emergency youth authorization, what's called for its vaccine. Now, the drug giant hopes to produce up to 50 million doses this year, with about half of those doses going here to the U.S. Moderna will apply soon to the FDA and expects to deliver about 20 million doses in the U.S. by the end of the year. Companies are trying to figure out now what the best way is to keep the product safe and effective. And as our Dana Jacobson is about to show us, it is an icy challenge. Dana, good morning to you. Tell us about it. All right, Tony, good morning. It is a challenge because hours after that COVID vaccine gets FDA approval, a series of tightly choreographed logistics will start playing out to get the vaccine into people's arms. Now, both Moderna and Pfizer's vaccines require two doses weeks apart. And then to further complicate things, there are obstacles to moving and storing the vaccine. At Acme Dry Ice in Cambridge, Massachusetts. These are big pellets and these are small pellets. Right. Owner Mark Savinor and his team are working around the clock to provide dry ice to vaccine manufacturers. Not something I'm guessing that when you start a dry ice company you think about necessarily. No, I never thought I'd be saving lives, but it feels really good. Colder than Antarctica in winter, dry ice is critical to transporting and storing the coronavirus vaccines. The demand is definitely higher right now for the vaccine makers because as fast as they're making the vaccine, they're shipping it out. Dry ice is made from carbon dioxide or CO2, a byproduct of ethanol production. With Americans driving less in the wake of the pandemic, ethanol plants shut down, resulting in a shortage of carbon dioxide over the summer. How important is the CO2 to the dry ice process if that's the basic ingredient? Well, without CO2, it's like being at McDonald's without hamburgers. <laughs> so this summer there was a shortage of dry ice. What about right now where there seems to be so much focus Right on? now we happen to have a great supply chain of CO2. You know, it's always scary to see what the demand is going to be with the vaccine. With the help of dry ice, vaccines will be shipped from manufacturing facilities to freezer farms like Pfizer's in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and then to vaccination sites across the country. Tanya Alcorn is a Pfizer supply chain executive. What's your biggest challenge as far as distribution? Honestly, the biggest challenge is we're doing so much in parallel, we don't have all the answers. Pfizer's vaccine needs to be kept at about 94 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. So it developed a thermal shipper to transport and store its vaccine at subarctic temperatures. So the cool box, at least we think it's cool, is um, it's a shipper box about the size of like a carry-on suitcase. And then there's dry ice that goes around it. And then it has actually a device within it that has a continuous GPS and temperature monitor. So we will be able to have uh, continuous eyes on every shipper. Each cool box contains a minimum of about a thousand vaccine doses. That's a problem. Tim Size represents 43 rural hospitals across Wisconsin. If you can ship a thousand, you can you can ship 200. It's more expensive. It's more cumbersome. Size says the nearly 1,000 minimum dose requirement is a challenge for rural areas. It means rural health care workers may have to travel to big cities to receive the vaccine, all while tackling a new wave of coronavirus infections. We're under a huge surge. So for them to have to travel, maybe take a day off of work to travel to a regional center to then stand in line to get vaccinated, go back to work, and then two weeks later go back, taking another day off, uh, just makes the logistics really bad. Pfizer says they are working on a smaller shipper with less doses, which should be available early next year. Ultra-cold freezers can help vaccine doses survive longer, but size says those are out of reach financially for most rural hospitals. There's a lot of other things they could do with fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. Moderna says its vaccine is stable at standard refrigeration temperatures and can be handled using existing infrastructure at pharmacies and doctor's offices. Sai says that could be a game changer, but he wants rural areas to have equal access to all the vaccines. We have a tremendous need to bridge rural and urban back together in our country. If basically rural's getting the message, we'll start with urban, even if it's for reasonable logistical reasons, it's bad optics. I don't think anybody wants to give a message that rural Wisconsin, rural America is second class. 
Pfizer told us one of its fundamental principles is equitable access to their vaccines for all communities. Alcorn acknowledged that they don't have all the answers today, but she said Pfizer is working with Operation Warp Speed to make sure it can get doses out to rural communities. Anthony? Dana, thank you. Wow, this is just so critical what's happening. This is a critical inflection mm -hmm. point in all of this. Yeah. Getting it out. And you want to make sure those frontline medical workers in rural communities can get this. I, if you, well, I feel like you can solve this rural issue. You yeah. Put the vaccines on a, on a truck if you have to with more dry ice, get them yeah. out to the communities who need them so the people in those hospitals who are working so hard don't have to make the trip themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I like is that Mark is on the case. He, the I ice think man. He's got dry a ice man. Ice man. Ice man. The dry ice man coming. He's taking it very seriously and we need him right now. Yeah, I think sure it's do. great.